What's going on, folks? Ted from Nerd Emergent here, and we went out and got all of the D&D &D minifigures from uh, the Lego set. So there are 12 in all, and if you don't know, on the bottom, they have a QR code and a barcode, and if you get, there's a couple of different apps you can get that you can download where you're actually able to scan these and actually see what's inside the box before you open it. So if you want to make sure you're not getting any duplicates or you want to get extra of a specific kind, you can go ahead and do that. So I did that. So I managed to go to the Lego store. They were super nice, brought out multiple boxes. They knew what I was doing when I was scanning it. It wasn't a problem. So Really cool of the Lego store to do that, my local Lego store. And yeah, we've got all of the different minifigures, so I thought we'd bring it into the close cam, open them all up, because some of them have unique sculpts and different heads and cool stuff. So if you're a Lego fan or a D&D &D fan, these are definitely worth checking out. So let's go ahead and come into our up close cam here. We'll show you kind of what we're working with. Here is the box, right, showing off a variety of the different characters here on the front. And then the back is just some disclaimer language. So we go ahead and rip this cardboard open. Inside, everyone will be this piece of paper that's gonna have, you know, how to assemble the various minifigures, put the staffs and things together, and then a little kind of collector guide to check off who you've received so far. So up first, we have our bard. As you can see, they all come with a plate that you can stand them up on, which is nice. And then again, a lot of cool color combinations here for our bard. And we have multiple head options here. Our bard is at least an elf. So we have kind of a, it looks like a singing head. And then if we spin it around, we have just a smiling head. And I think we might have both. Yeah, here we go. Oops, spinning around. It is singing as well. So we have, uh, looks like, I think, male and female heads. Just go ahead and slap one of these heads on here. And then you've got your hair and elven ears that just kind of pop on the top. Zoom this in a little bit so you guys can get a better look at it. And there we go. We have, oh, I didn't put it on. We have a little, we'll pop the head off. We have a little scarf. Looks like it goes right here in the front. And then we can pop our head on. There we go. And we have an option for a loot. Pretty cool. It can just be, it's got a little post on the back that you can just clip right into the hand. So there you are, your bard with the loot. And then they also come with dual golden, looks like maybe scimitars or rapiers to wield. So let's go ahead and put our bard off to the corner there. And we'll get going with our next minifigure box. Here we go. All right, uh, I think we have, what do we get? This is our it's a dwarf barbarian, I believe. Yeah, you can tell because the legs are slightly shorter. And then we have this sort of neck ruffle, which is a pretty cool little additional piece. And then again, we have the options for male and female head. This one has like a standard and it looks like a, it might be like a little beat up or standard and smiling or maybe raging Oop. options. Then we have our hair. We can just go ahead and pop on, pop them on the plate. And then we have option for the one hand, we have a torch. So I'll put that in this hand, and then we have an axe for the other hand, which is a pretty cool looking dwarven axe. It actually comes with an extra piece of fire there, and there is our dwarven fighter, or dwarven barbarian. Let's pop our 
bearing off this side. I really am digging all these sculpts. I know it's a common thing that a lot of folks do, myself included. If you didn't have the minifigures, you would use, uh, uh, or, you know, generic D&D minis, you would use Lego minifigures to represent, um, you know, your characters on the board there. So here we have uh, a halfling, even smaller legs than the dwarf, a halfling druid. So we have, again, man, oh, this one's winking, let's go with the winky face, the female winky face. Now they have, oh, you know what's included, we actually take the head off, is included in this piece of cardboard is a piece of fabric which represents their cloak. So we're going to take this out, so that a little bit, pop the head off, and then the way these work is there's these, kind of put one hole on and then slide the other one over the head post and it kind of makes your cloak. There's our winky face, although our male halfling does have sideburns, which is pretty cool. You've got your, what I think is a new sculpt on this helmet. Get it to sit on there, there we go. With the antlers, put them on their face, and then they have this really cool staff. Oh, they have a little bird companion that can just sit right on top of the hand, which is really neat. And then they have all of these different flower pieces that you see in front of me here to go ahead and like stack up. You can just slide one on that, maybe this, then put this one on top here, brown piece. And go ahead and stick a flower in the top maybe. Like that make yourself a little flowery staff or you could fold the pieces however you'd like it's again one of the things i think lego is super innovative about is taking pieces that maybe weren't used for one thing and then reinventing them to be used in a different way like using all these different flower pieces to make a cool wizard uh, or druid staff all right here we have oh we have the aracocra the Aracocra Ranger here, which is really cool. I'm imagining, I think it might have been like a Chima set had these, but I like the, you can kind of see they have a unique leg design because they're supposed to be bird legs. Go ahead and pop on the torso, and then the back piece here, right, are the wings. And then we have this really you know, badass Aracocra head. We've got their bow here which you know when i was younger i don't remember the bows having the i guess they didn't look as good as this but they still had the arrows like attached to it can't get them to grip the bow though there we go gripping the bow put on his base and he has a little puppy right as his animal companion which is really cool it doesn't unfortunately stick to the base but either way very cool Right on to the next one. We have who is this? Oh, this is Zastam. All right, let's go ahead and open up Zastam. Right, he's got the sorcerer kind of gown face. Slap that on there, and that'll just sit right on our base there. And he's got inside his little container here. He has. Uh, Ghoul cloak. All right. I guess this start or maybe it's supposed to be this goes on or like that. There's the cloak and this is like the upper part of the cloak maybe. Let's try it. Put that on there. You can go ahead and stick his mean lich face on there. Now he comes with this piece of like fire. Let's go ahead and take a look at his little picture. He's got what a skull. Okay, it's just supposed to be like a fire effect, which is pretty neat. I don't think I've ever seen this before. He just kind of is holding on to 
this little piece of fire, like he's casting a fireball. And then he's got this skeleton red skull that he just puts in one hand. I mean, that's pretty neat. I really, really like the... I don't, like I said, I don't know how long these, like, fire, like, spell effects have existed. But that is very cool. Alright. Moving on to the next one. We have... Okay, we have... Uh, what is this one? This is, I think, either a wizard or maybe a warlock. This is our friend with the eyeball staff. So, we got another base. I think it's supposed to maybe be a warlock. We've got our... Is this supposed to be... Yeah, we've got like pauldrons, right? That go on here. And we'll grab this guy. He's got a... Five o'clock shadow. We can pop on his elven hair, right? The ears. And then they've got two... Kind of long, like, I don't know what these are, because this looks like I thought maybe the dagger was supposed to be involved in that, but he's got a two, maybe this is, a, I was going to say rogue, but I don't think it is. He's got dual daggers, which are pretty nice looking. Um, Then we have this sort of staff stick, which I think we're supposed to put one of these on. And put the eyeball on the end of it. So you can have your eyeball staff. Maybe the eyeball staff and a dagger. And then obviously again we have the extra head. Also an extra set of pauldrons, which is interesting because I don't think you'd need the two. But hey, leg is always good about including extra pieces just in case you can mix and match and swap around if need be. Alright. We have here, ooh. Ah, the Lady of Pain herself. All right. Got some interesting pieces in here. All right. He also has a nice bright orange sorcerer base. And she has a piece of fabric, which is her Lady of Pain cloak, which looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and this at the back. Okay, put her on here. Go ahead and flip her over. Let's just got a cloak. And we have where's her head go? Is it just oh it's just oh look. It's just one piece. They're not something that goes inside there. I guess it just sits on top. How does her body come together? Does she not have... A, oh, there's this just empty black head that the... will go on top of the body. And then the late... This is like actually like a rubber material. Sits on top. And then she's supposed to stand on top of this clear piece. I believe. Well, that's how they have her in the image, is her standing on top of that, and then she's holding, like, I don't know if these are supposed to go together, or... Do we have her holding? I guess she's got, like, one of these little clear plastic, or one of these clear, like, single stud pieces, which I like her. Pretty cool. So I think if you were to take her off of the base, you could put her on the plate. And then she's got another one of these little, like, symbols or whatever these are supposed to represent here. Very cool. Again, I'm really loving the amount of unique pieces that get made for these light ones. Alright, here is our... This is very cool. This is our Dragonborn Paladin. Alright, so first of all, we have armor, which is really cool that it slips on to the central piece like that. 
Now we've got like our plate mail. We have our sweet dragonborn head, which is awesome. Then we've got a shield, which I'll pick up right here, with our symbol of Bahamut on the front of it, which is really neat. Then we have a, I'm going to take and add one of these studs to I think the bottom, like that, and one to the top like this. Go ahead and attach our mace head here. And then he's got on the bottom is this little tassel. It's really cool. Does this go this way? Maybe I was wrong. And you know what? Does that just extra? Yeah. There we go. So we can go ahead and snap in our mace. I didn't realize had this cool little like tassel at the bottom, which is really neat. Oh, you know what? This is supposed to push down. There we go. So now it's a little bit better there. And then in the back, actually, we have a spot to put the horns in the top of his head. So you can put them in, you know, bend them whichever direction you want. But this is a, I don't know if this is a wholly unique head or not, but I think that the, uh, the tassel bit here for the mace is, which is really cool. This is a really, my boys both really, really want this Megan figure. They really like the look of that one the best. And I can see why. It's pretty cool. I also didn't realize that like, the mace head was kind of iridescent. All right. Here we have my girl Tasha. So we got to go ahead and assemble her couple of body parts here. Throw on her on the base. Now, does she come with two heads? No, it looks like she just comes with the one head. We've got the sort of maniacal laughter head. And the sort of murky face. We're going to put on her maniacal laughter. And then we've got her hat and hair, our combo piece. Slots right on there like that. Go ahead and lower down camera a little bit and she has her little cauldron which I don't know if the cauldron piece is unique but this is pretty cool and then it's got these two pieces of fire with their two little tiny studs inside there so it looks like we can go ahead and just stick these I don't know if we can only do one at a time looks like we can only do one at a time there's our purple fire from our cauldron and probably one of my favorite, I think, newer Lego pieces are these spell books that click together. And then they actually have a scroll, which looks to be, in this instance, Tasha's hideous laughter. And it just snaps in. So you've got, like, whatever spell you're casting. And then as the wizard, you can just kind of clip on like that. And you can bring up, you know both the wizard's hand if you want them to be like looking at their spell book like, look at how cool that design is and like i said it's got the scroll and like i know if you have the official D, &D set it comes with other scrolls that you can like snap out of there to put in and here she is just cackling away casting tasha's hideous laughter with her little bubbling purple cauldron all right looks like we got three left to go here. Next up, we have, oh, this is definitely also probably my other favorite, is this tiefling um, warlock. So first of all, we have a tail, which I've never seen this before, that like sits between the legs and the torso. Which is a really neat little bit. It's like, again, another like bendable rubber piece that sits there. So now your tiefling has a tail. Somewhere, I just move them here. There, here are the heads. We'll go with this guy. He looks very stern. Uh, we'll go ahead and pop on his head. And then he's got, again, the tiefling horns and the hair. The horns are built into the hair itself. I really like that we've got our Eldritch Blast magical attack with the three beams or could be maybe magic missile as well 
and then a little mini dragon, which I don't know if this existed previously either, but this is a really cool figure. It is more of a traditional dragon than a pseudo dragon, but it does have its own, you know, stud so it can sit on the base. Then you can have your little tiefling warlock and their little pack to the chain familiar, which is really cool. I'll show your cauldron's rolling away. Just sit the cauldron, cauldron stick. Yeah, all right, we'll move Tasha over one to put her cauldron next to her. There we go. And then we'll put our little tiefling right next door. And we can see we are almost done. All right, let's see who's next on the list here. Ah, if you're a fan of Baldur's Gate 3, you know who's coming next. We have probably one a cool one with a very unique sculpt, but probably the uh, the least amount of customization is our Mind Flayer and our little Intellect Devourer. Again, a really cool and definitely unique sculpt, but they could make, you know, octopus people in the future, but a unique sculpt for this set. And then obviously we have the little Intellect devourer here which has you know an open base on the bottom but very cool although like i said not a lot of customization in the intellect devourer and the mind flare combo and finally just in time for spooky season is the man himself strad von zarovich we have here are strad's pieces okay we have his head rolled somewhere. I don't know where. Oh, there it is. And then he does come with a cloak. Let's go ahead and reach in. Pull out his cloak. Pop off Strahd's cloak. Here's his head. We have smirking or the more traditional fangs, bared vampire head. We have his luscious locks. With his widowed teeth, his more traditional looking kind of long sword. And because he needs to, like all good vampire lords, have a glass that he can throw away when you're talking about what is a man other than a miserable little pile of secrets. And he can throw his glass away and break it. And he comes with a rat sort of familiar with red eyes that I think has a base that we can stick down in here. So there you go, folks. That is all of the Lego minifigures that are available currently from uh, our friends over at Lego and the combo with Dungeons and Dragons. I think these are absolutely some of the best minifigures and some of the best stuff Lego's done in a while. A lot of awesome and unique sculpts. Again, I'll just show it to you one more time. Here is sort of everybody together showing all of the different options for, as you can see, uh, a variety. I would love to see that if our friends at LEGO could go ahead and make a second series of these to just kind of round out the other classes that weren't covered here. I also really like that they went through to give us Tiefling, uh, Halfling, Dwarf, Elf, uh, Dragonborn, really cool i would love to see a goliath maybe something a little bit bigger i don't know how common that is to do in the lego world but like a goliath so it's a little bit bigger um you throw an orc in here as well um and then i wouldn't mind seeing like some and we got eric kokra which was kind of a wild pick so i'd love to see like kobold or um you know like a grung or a bullywug would be really cool to get like a frog character um or turtle to get the you know the shell pieces that would be neat and then obviously, yeah, just round out the other classes. We have Barbarian, Fighter, or Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Ranger, and then like Sorcerer and Warlock. So there's definitely an option for a cool Monk character in here. Uh, maybe a Sneaky Rogue. Obviously, some of these you could switch out the pieces and they would kind of fill that gap, but I'd still love to see it. And then maybe some other interesting iconic characters. Like we've got Tasha here. Maybe you throw in somebody like... Uh, you could do Morden Kanan, maybe. You could do Bigby, especially since they just changed up Bigby's kind of overall look. Uh, a Sererak Vecna would have been a no-brainer, in my opinion. 
uh, but they went with Zastam, which is fine. Good Red Wizard there. You could do the D&D movie characters. You could do the D&D cartoon characters. Get a Uni of the Unicorn in here. So let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. I have heard people have been finding these at places other, like you don't just have to go to the Lego store. Uh, I just knew they would have them. But, uh, and a big shout out to my wife for going and picking those up because it's down by her work, which is really awesome of her to do so. Um, but, you know, I heard them, I heard people say they haven't met like Meyer. I heard, uh, I saw them actually at Kohl's. They may be, I looked online, looks like they might be at Walmart. I'm not sure about Target, but you might be able to find these just outside of, you know, specific stores. So go ahead and take a look. They're definitely worth your time and download those apps. I think the one that I download here, let me just tell you which one it is, is Minifig Scan. So I just went to the Play Store on my phone and searched Minifig Scan, downloaded that app, and then I was able to scan the bottom of the boxes to figure out what's inside. So again, if you're like me and your boys are obsessed with the Dragonborn, then you're probably going to want to go and pick up multiple copies of that one. Um, or if you want to just, again, mix and match the pieces or have different versions and different kind of with the different heads, the male and female versions, wheeling different weapons, definitely worth going and checking out. So let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below, and I'll see you all next time.